Okay, well, welcome everyone to our um, power lunch, but I am excited about this being a training piece that's going to be sitting in our full circle, um, Mary Kay, because something that um, I was taught from my very first um, new consultant orientation was the importance of a Mary Kay image. And I think this is a great time to do a refresher. And I have a couple of my friends that are gonna help me with this conversationally um, because after going through the pandemic and us sitting behind computer screens and honestly, like just being excited we could sell something and then figuring out how to do business with the computer screen in between us, now we're out in the world again and we're putting together our hybrid of virtual or in person. And I have found through this whole process um, over the last three years that the closer we line ourselves up to how Mary Kay founded this company and the things that served us well, the booking, coaching, selling, recruiting, full circle Mary Kay um, and Mary Kay image, um, the, the easier it is to build our business, the more sustainable it's gonna be, and we're helping then to pass batons on that have served this opportunity and company well for 60 years. And so we're going to talk about Mary Kay image. And it's not just what you wear. You're going to see Olivia here in her beauty coat, Alden in her director's suit. Um, it's not just what you're wearing. When we used to teach Mary Kay image, it was the whole package. It was that your business cards weren't tattered and didn't have gum on them. You weren't digging them out of a bag. You didn't have wrinkled lookbooks. Mary Kay, I remember sitting there horrified at times, thinking about what my Mary Kay car looked like as she was talking about her pink Cadillacs better be out there and spick and span all the time, trophies on wheels. And I'm still going, all right, well, that one puked on the back of the one seat, like uh, her first ride home from the hospital. And then, you know, there's French fries all over in the back seat for sure. I mean, I'm just thinking of, you know, li you lived in your car, you had cassette tapes all over the place, it's, you, your office there. Um, but I mean, she was serious. It better look like a trophy on wheels. And we were also taught, like, you know, it wasn't that you needed this big gigantic house, but often, you know, in Mary Kay, I went to new consultant orientation at Debbie Moore's home. And we did a lot of events in our homes. I went to Mary Kay's house. And again, it wasn't about the, um, how grandiose the house was. It was that you were being invited into someone's home. So it didn't feel like an impersonal business all the time. Relationships were built. It was hospitality. I was taught and modeled hospitality, which I hadn't really seen that, you know, growing up, I learned about, you know, having your guest room be as nice as your master bedroom, as far as your sheets and your towels. And, you know, I go to people's houses and like, there's no sheets on the bed and they're just like, you're grabbing a towel out of the, you know, the hamper. And it's like, that doesn't really make you feel special. You know, Mary Kay taught us our image was Everyone has a sign around their neck saying, make me feel special. So the image piece wasn't about us focusing people on us. It was making us feel comfortable enough, either in our home, in our clothes, in our body, that we could forget about ourselves and focus on serving other people. And so, you know, that is kind of a lost art right now. And I think that's um, something very valuable about what we offer in Mary Kay, because I learned as a 23 year old, um, you know, Debbie Moore, warm booking me in a mall. If she wasn't professionally dressed, I would never have said yes to probably even having a facial. I wouldn't have said yes to the opportunity because I was a 23 year old that already had a career that was looking for a career. And so because she was professionally dressed, I then said, oh, this is a business, this is a career. Whereas if she was if representing this as a hobby or just something that she was doing, you know, side hustle, that's very different, you guys. And Mary Kay's always been very different than other direct selling opportunities with how we present ourselves. Um, so I invited a couple of young women to share because, um, you know, 
I started when I was 23, but now you can add on 38 years. So I'm the age that I saw women be when I started this and said, okay, when I get to be that age, I want to look like that. I want to be that happy. I want to be that excited about life. Um, I wanted to be that comfortable in my own skin because I was a 23 year old who was not comfortable in her own skin. Um, but that was in the mid eighties. So in the mid eighties, when I graduated from college, women were wearing at the business school I went to blue suits that looked just like men's suits. They could have been men's suits because they were wearing pant suits then and a white shirt and a maroon tie, like a tie. I'm like, I'm not a boy. I don't want to wear a tie. And you could like tie it differently if you were a girl. I'm like, I don't like this at all. But that was the culture of that business school for the companies that were recruiting out of that business school. And I remember saying, I'm going to wear a royal blue suit. And my dad's like, you're not going to get a job. Like that is just not okay. I should have known that I wasn't like meant for th those jobs, right? I wasn't meant for those jobs. When I came into Mary Kay, I'm like, I like this. There's some creativity in it, but they still look sharp and professional. And so I liked that we had a director suit, a national suit, a beauty coat, because then I felt comfortable at my parties and I didn't have to think about, am I overdressed? Am I underdressed? I loved that Mary Kay said in the early 60s when she started this, that she saw women either burning bras and not wearing any clothes or dressing like men so they could be paid what men were paid. And Mary Kay wanted to help women be paid what they're worth, but she didn't think that dressing, you know, um, in an unfeminine way would help them be paid more. And you know what? Mary Kay was right. Because when I started in the mid 80s, women were making like 76 cents to every dollar a man makes. We just heard stats. It's now up to 82 cents to every dollar a man makes. So you dressing in an unfeminine way is not helping you be paid more. Um, actually, in Mary Kay, now all over the world, she's given women an opportunity to be paid what they're worth. But in our culture, just like at Chick-fil-A, just like at, um, you know, a, if you're a nurse, just like in any industry or company, there are expectations and there is a culture. And so we're going to share you, with you today what the Mary Kay culture is, what it, it hasn't changed. And I'm grateful that it hasn't changed. It was countercultural in the 60s when Mary Kay started this. It was very countercultural in the 80s when I started this. And then these women have been in, you know, 10 years, but they've been around the Mary Kay culture since they were born. And so I thought it'd be valuable for you all to hear the impact that the Mary Kay culture not only has on the consultant and director or national, but also their children and their family and other women who are watching them. Because Mary Kay was about impacting women and children's lives. And our image and how we do this is all part of that. And so I have Olivia and Alden here with us today to um, share their perspective and just, you know, we're going to have a conversation. Um, they both grew up in Mary Kay households. Both of them had moms who were Mary Kay sales directors. Um, both had moms who were Mary Kay sales directors that were raised by legacy pioneer um, Mary Kay leadership. So like we were taught, um, you know, really like make sure your nails are done. If someone hasn't complimented you on your hair in the last month, you need a different hairdresser. Um, I remember Pat Danforth saying, if someone is wondering what you're selling, then your shirt is too low and your skirt is too high. That was one of Mary Kay's buddies and, uh, you know, a legacy national sales director with Mary Kay. And so these women have grown up as, as babies, as young women, as teenagers, now as married women. And you guys, it's to me, um, the value of this Mary Kay culture on women generationally is priceless. I would say yes to this opportunity all over again for the impact that it's had on young women like this. And so Olivia and Alden, if you'd share your for now future story, so people get have an idea of who you are, 
um, what has been your exposure to Mary Kay? And then, you know, share, you know, what has been the impact of the Mary Kay image um, to you? Also, like when you hear that Mary Kay image, what does that, what does that mean to you? And then we'll continue on. Who wants to lead us off? You can go first, Livia. Okay. Um, well, hi, everybody. So excited to be here sharing with you today. Thank you, Dawn, for um, inviting me into your area family. Um, so like Dawn said, I did grow up in a Mary Kay household. My mom has been a Mary Kay consultant and director for longer than I've been alive. Kind of like Dawn, she also started in her early to mid 20s and was raised by those legacy leaders in this company. And I will tell you that the image of women in Mary Kay is actually what really drew her into becoming a consultant. She loved the products. And um, one day, one of her best girlfriends who was a gym teacher at the time and a gymnastics coach and spent most of her time wearing a sweatsuit, um, showed up to her house one day and was wearing a skirted business suit with her makeup done and her hair done. And my mom was like, what are you doing? And that's what ultimately prompted her to sign her beauty consultant agreement so many years ago. And so um, fast forward to when I came into the world, um, I saw my mom attending her Mary Kay meetings every single week. And something that I really was reflecting on, even just today before we got on this Zoom, was how we've all come across so many women. It's a thing with women in our culture and in our society that your confidence has so much, so much to do with your outward appearance. And when we're not so focused on our outward appearance, we can feel more confident um, in our ability to impact others and to take our focus off of ourselves and put it on other people. And I know that there's friends of mine who are my age or even women who are um, enough my senior to be my mom who really struggle with their appearance and feeling confident in their appearance and that inhibits their ability to take the focus off of themselves, right? Um, and to a lot of them, it's not necessarily their fault. They weren't like me. They weren't raised in a household where they had a mom who knew how to look sharp, who knew how to dress professionally, who knew how to uphold her image to a higher standard. And so I feel like oftentimes we know that unless we had a mom who was into skincare or who was into makeup, you never necessarily learned that. And so I think there's a lot of women in our culture who never really learned how to dress up to a higher standard. So I'm really grateful now that I can reflect back on that and say, you know, I saw my mom attending these business meetings every week. I saw her going to career conference and seminar and prioritizing that time and really protecting the image of Mary Kay. And so when I came into adulthood and when I was in college and interviewing for jobs and whatnot, um, it became very easy for me to pick out a wardrobe, even though it wasn't in my comfort zone, because to much my mom's dismay, I was kind of a tomboy growing up. I don't think I started wearing makeup until I was like 16 or 17, and it was pretty minimal at that point. She really struggled to get me to wear skirts and dresses <laughs> as a child, um, so it was not a natural transition, I guess, for me coming into Mary Kay as a new consultant when I was 18 um, to put a skirt on to go to my very first Mary Kay success meeting, but I knew that that was the culture and that was not something that could be compromised just for me. And so I knew that I had to step up into that role and play by the rules of the game of the Mary Kay image culture because I had seen that modeled out for me. And so then when I was in college and attending other business conferences that had to do with um, the career that I was pursuing at that time, I felt I wasn't held back by dressing myself in a professional manner that would represent um, my standards that translated into how I would perform as an employee, if that makes sense. And so I saw a lot of girls my age who really struggled with that. And, um, you know, we can have our own opinions about it, but there's been so many research studies done about how women who dress more professionally, who dress more feminine, actually garner more respect 
in the workplace. And so I was just really grateful that because my mom modeled that out for me, I, that was something I didn't have to think about. And I could just go to improving my resume and performing well in my interviews and things like that. And so ultimately when I graduated college, my story is really similar to Dawn as far as you know why she decided to pursue a Mary Kay career. And it was because I started going to Mary Kay meetings after college. And yeah, I looked at these women standing in the front of the room and thought to myself, I want to be like her when I grow up, because there were women in my other career who maybe I wanted their jobs one day, but I did not want to be like them. Um, whereas these women in Mary Kay who had had long careers in Mary Kay, you know, they had successful marriages. They just walked and talked with a different amount of energy. And even still today, I'm able to sit at the feet of some of the women in our company who are retirement age or what some um, you know, by cultural standards, people would expect them to be, you know, on a Florida resort and <laughs> just riding around their golf carts all day. Um, but these women have so much energy and they're so wise and they have so much knowledge. Um, and I want to be like them. And so I decided to leave behind my corporate career and pursue my Mary Kay business full time when I graduated college. That was nine years ago. So now, like Dawn said, I'm newly married um, as of a couple of years ago. And um, my husband been as an entrepreneur as well, a new entrepreneur. So that's been really fun to um, build businesses together. And I'm just really looking forward to the future of carrying on Mary Kay's legacy. And in the last couple of years, I've saw um, a lot of directors my age, like Alden and other women in our generation. And I'm just getting so excited about this next generation of Mary Kay leaders. When I go to Mary Kay events and I see top directors, Cadillac directors, new nationals who are my age and um, just feel very protective about taking this culture into the future. So that's me. Awesome. Okay, so I am Alden Sweeney Wido. Many of you know me, um, so I'll keep this brief. I am Donna and Sweeney's daughter. So I did grow up in a Mary Kay household, came home from the pink Cadillac, the one that she just said I puked in, which I don't remember that story. Um, but I, um, I had the privilege of seeing a mom work at a high level. And I think that's something that when I think of Mary Kay image, I value so much because the women that I saw building Mary Kay businesses were successful within Mary Kay, but take them outside of Mary Kay, they were going to be successful at whatever they were doing. That's the caliber of women they were, but they chose to be successful within Mary Kay. And I loved that. And you could see that and feel that from being around them. They exuded that. And I bet that you guys can think of women that are in your life or that you know or have observed that you just can tell they're they're great. They're successful and they would be successful at whatever they did, but they look the part. And I saw that within Mary Kay and I saw that it was integrity based. I saw that it wasn't a facade. A lot of times I think people, when they talk about image, they think that it's, you know, fake smoke and mirrors. And when we're talking about that in Mary Kay, that's not at all what we're talking about. We want you to look great and feel great as you pursue this business to become the greatest version of yourself that you were created to be. It's not, you know, any fake you know, front that you're putting up. And I got to see that, you know, the backside of that, because I got to see that what was shown to the world as my mom's, you know, Mary Kay business was what was lived out behind the scenes as well. And I really valued that then. And I very much value that now. Um, so I started Mary Kay when I was 19, I was in college and I started simply for a free car and then quickly realized this is what I believe I was created to do. And I have been doing this full time ever since for about 10 years now. And um, I have had the privilege of driving the trophy on wheels, pink Cadillac. And there have been times that I've been driving around like, oh my gosh, I need a car wash right now because Mary Kay Ash would not be pleased with the situation at hand right now. Um, but I'm so happy for the that check that I know in, you know, within me and I've been willing to listen to the knowledge of people before me that I have the thought that I need to get this in check because this is the brand that I represent and it's not, you know, Alden, it's Mary Kay Cosmetics. Because when I get out of a pink Cadillac or when I've, when I'm seen in a pink Cadillac, people don't know me as Alden. They 
associate anything about me with Mary Kay Cosmetics. And that's something that I take very seriously is how we are perceived as a company. And that's why I think image has always been very important to me. Um, you know, even before Mary Kay, because I got to see, you know, mom with a great image growing up, like Olivia said, but especially now, I think that in Mary Kay, we stand out a cut above, you know, in the business world, in the direct sales world, in any of the worlds, if we choose to uphold the image that Mary Kay Ash created this business to be, you know, 60 years ago. So um, yeah, that's pretty much me at this stage of life. And I love that both of you guys are talking about, it's not, it's not the outside stuff. When people think image, it's just your dress for success. You know, Mary Kay said, you may be the only Mary Kay someone ever meets. You may be the only Bible they ever read. And she said a smile was the most important thing that you could wear every single day. We are taught to wear a Mary Kay pin to attract conversations to us. Um, I love the training that I got growing up because every company has a culture, but honestly with the internships and the job that I had out of college, like Olivia was saying, she may have wanted the paycheck or the title, but she didn't want to be like those women. I loved seeing, I wanted to be like these women. And I, as I've aged in Mary Kay, I will tell you that um, because this is my job, I take better care of myself than I would have if I wasn't in this business. And that has served me well physically, um, obviously with your skin, you know, it's, I don't need, to feel like I have to go and have surgeries if I don't want to, because I've taken care of my skin since I was in my early 20s. And so I can choose to age gracefully. If I want to get stuff done, you can. I'm not saying anything about that, but isn't it nice that you can be taught how to do things and be comfortable with your aging process, you know, to look the best that you can when you're 60, the best that you can when you're 20, 30, 40, 50, um, 60, 70, 80, 90, et cetera. Um, but it's that inner self that, you know, we were taught to also be successful in our, you know, spiritually, personally, relationally, financially, professionally, in all arenas of life. Mary Kay wanted us to be successful in all arenas of life. It just exudes itself in image. When Alden was talking about um, the importance of image now I want both of you guys to share you know if Mary Kay Ash was here right now what do you think what would be her advice to all of us you know not just new people coming in the business or young women that this may be like totally new information because I will tell you when my daughter grew up her the role models that she had after going to seminars since she was nine years old looked a lot different than her peers' role models, they, a lot different. And so I, what do you think Mary Kay Ash would say? But when you guys are thinking about this, think about not just your physical self that you're presenting, what are you presenting to the world on your social media? You guys, when you put stuff out there on your, not, I mean, your business site, obviously you're doing business stuff. But just like Alden said, wherever you go, you're representing Mary Kay. Debbie Moore used to teach us, do not go out to your mailbox looking in any way other than you would be proud to meet Mary Kay there if she was hand delivering a letter. That's a whole nother standard, right? Um, but what are people putting out on social media? You know, are you representing a positive attitude? Are you representing or are you just throwing garbage out there and sad sack stuff and not, you guys really, like what Mary Kay said, like everyone has issues. Why are you dumping your garbage into someone else's front lawn? But that is what happens on social media too. So I want you to think about that. Like, how do you represent yourself to the world in all arenas of your life? Because you're representing Mary Kay. And you guys, this isn't any different than any other company. You know, honestly, there's companies, they're, they're, their HR department's looking through your social media. 
and people are getting fired on a daily basis for what they're doing on the weekends and they're posting on social media because it doesn't represent their company and that mm -hmm. culture. So what do you both think that Mary Kay Ash, what would be her advice right now in 2023 as we head into our next 60 years? that is going to be important for us to not just survive, but thrive as we head into our next six years. Well, I can touch first on, you know, anybody who's watching this, if you haven't read Mary Kay's autobiography ever or recently, please pull this out because honestly, so much of our image, as Dawn was saying, it's, it's not about how you look like, yes, it's about how you look, but that means there's so much more under the surface there that is tied to your image. And it's really hard to understand our company's standards of excellence. If you don't understand our founder and who she was and why she started this company. And, um, I know what she said back when she wrote this book, and I can quote directly from this book and say, we are in the business of helping women look more feminine and beautiful. So we feel very strongly that our beauty consultants address accordingly. But Mary Kay also talks a lot about how, you know, the whole purpose of her company was to enrich the lives of others and to serve other people. So all of it is coming from that heart posture and that translates so well into social media. Are we using social media to make ourselves feel better by, like Dawn said, dumping all of our stuff, you know, airing our dirty laundry to make ourselves feel better, to get that validation of putting our junk out there and having people tell us, oh, it's okay. Or are we using our social media platforms to serve our audiences? Because I do believe that if Mary Kay were here today, she would probably be using social media because she was always so ahead of her time. Um, but she would definitely have standards and I also believe that sometimes people forget and I never had the privilege of meeting Mary Kay Ash but I've heard although she was such a loving person she also had that velvet hammer and I believe that her standards would be way higher than any of ours and she would hold us to that standard I mean quoting in her book um, in chapter 12 she says she adamantly opposed women wearing slacks on the job so it's not like it would be nice if women in Mary Kay wore skirts or dresses or that's what she prefers. She said she adamantly opposed women wearing slacks on the job. And that's because she wanted women to be celebrated for their femininity at a time in a world where, as Dawn mentioned earlier, women were taught they basically had to be men if they were going to be successful. And I believe, and as Mary Kay Ash believed, that women were created differently than men. She said that when God made man, he was just practicing. <laughs> and so celebrating that women have our own gifts and talents that are different than what men bring to the table and stepping up to that standard of excellence. Um, I think that's what she would expect from all of us today. I saw this cute, just a side note, it was in a gift book and it had, you know, like the woman's sign on the bathroom and they said um, on the bottom of it, it said it was never a dress and it shows it as a cape in the back. <laughs> like, yeah. that's so true. It was never a skirt. It was a cape. <laughs> Alden, what do you think Mary Kay would be sharing with us right now? I agree with what Olivia said that I believe she would be holding us to an even, even higher standard than what some might, some people might see as the, you know, highest standard in Mary Kay, um, because that's really what she did is always held people to a higher level, called people to be a, a cut above. Something that I think that has always stood out to me with the top women in Mary Kay or the women that I've admired the most, as far as like just first impression all the way through, you know, really getting to know them as a person is they're so classy. Nothing about them is trendy. They are class acts. And it's all about what is classy versus trendy. And in a world where everything's about trends and what's popular now and what feels good now and all of that, I believe Mary Kay Ash would say, step up and choose to be classy because you guys, class is timeless, right? And we're in a company that's been around for 60 years and, you know, we're going to be around for 60 more and more on top of that because 
we are classy and we are different. And that's a good thing. I remember when I was 19, I distinctly remember because I was finishing my first car and had just become a sales director. I was in Pittsburgh visiting my boyfriend, then husband, now Cody. And I finished my first car and became a sales director. And the first thing Dawn, as my mom said to me, was not congratulations, was not, yay, I'm so excited. It was welcome to Mary Kay leadership. You now represent the top business women in the company. You must act like it. And I remember being like, holy, okay, thank you. But wow, that was a lot, but it was a good lot. Like that was a, I can do this. I can step up and I can level up to this. And I'm excited too. I get to. And that's something that I think Mary Kay would definitely do is say, pick the sharpest looking outfit that you think you have now and level it up and have that be your new norm and have, you know, your image that you post on social media be a new norm, a new level of class. So when people think of you and associate you with Mary Kay Cosmetics, it's not trendy. It's not pointing to you. It's all about the class of Mary Kay Cosmetics. But I want to know from you, Dawn, because you knew her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, Mary Kay, um, she had, when she picked the director suits out, like she picked them, she got the final say in director suits. And we always were the best dressed uniforms, if you can call like a St. John suit and that gorgeous suit and even our beauty coats, if you can call those uniforms, best dressed in the nation. Every year, we always won that award. Um, but she, I remember being at her home and just going, I, I love being around a successful person that doesn't need to make you feel less than to validate their success and their title and their position. You know, I grew up and saw the higher up people got, especially women that wanted to keep other women away from them because in Mary Kay, you all can join me as nationals. In the jobs that you have outside of Mary Kay, it is a true pyramid. There's one president, so many people under it, so many people under them. You cannot have another person's job unless they die, are fired. Um, it, it, there's only so many. And so I loved in Mary Kay, the higher up people got with Mary Kay being at the top, the more humble they were, the more approachable they were, the warmer they were. And I saw that be very opposite. That was very countercultural to what I saw and what I still see. I, in, but you guys, that's servant leadership. Like you, I came into this thinking I was it in a bag of chips, you know, because of my grades, because of the school I went to, the, the job I was recruited for. And God's like, okay, well, that got you this far, but it's not going to get you through the rest of your life. And it's not going to get you through your Mary Kay. This is about helping other people get what they want. And when you do that, you're naturally going to be elevated. And so, you know, Mary Kay Ash, she was um, warm and strong at the same time. She was loving and straightforward at the same time. She told you the truth. She wasn't worried about public opinion or being trendy or what was going on in the culture. She said, I worked as a female and a single mom the majority of my life and was not paid what I was worth. And that is not okay. I haven't figured out how to change the rules of that game. So I'm making my own game so that other women don't have to deal with what I did. And so this is what she's given us, you know, and, and as Olivia said so wisely, Mary Kay's autobiography, uh, Pass It On book by Jennifer Cook, who worked with Mary Kay Ash for 25 years, uh, Mary Kay and People Management, get your hands on it. If you guys wanted to be successful with another company, you'd know their culture and you'd know their history and what their expectations were. Know them. Honestly, it's not horrible. Like looking and feeling your best, what, I don't know. That's been an advantage to me, not a disadvantage. And, you know, granted, there may be, you know, um, 
as I age, my heels aren't quite as high, but they're, you know, they're um, comfortable enough and they look professional enough and you figure out how to make it work. I don't have to wear, you know, my Ugg slippers around 24 seven. I mean, I figured out how to wear something comfortable and professional and not be Ugg slippers. Not that, and I love my Ugg slippers. So, you know, I know that Mary Kay, she'd be really proud that women are, you know, carrying on that um, her, the image that she thought was so important. And you guys, this is the future of our company. Mary Kay, the company is going to continue to produce amazing products. We have uh, Mary Kay's grandson that she always wanted to be at the helm. Um, she was prophetic in that decision for sure. Um, you guys, the, the company's debt free and it's family owned. That's who we get to represent. But Mary Kay said that this company's future when she was gone depended on the sales force, her daughters, the directors, the nationals, protecting the culture, the traditions and the principles. It's not the product and the legal and the website. It's the traditions, the culture, and the principles. I'm, I was proud from the day that Debbie Moore put my first pin on myself, and I will continue to represent this company. Even after as a national, I have to be an emeriti because it's been, it's a beautiful place for a girl to grow up. And it's a beautiful place for you to come in no matter what age you are as a girl and to reap the benefits of a culture that was made to help women realize how amazing they are from God's perspective versus, versus the cultures. Because when women go as the culture goes, it doesn't go well for women. It hasn't gone well. It's not getting better for women and children. But when you go as God designed us and what he made us for, it's amazing. It's that rose that blooms. I'd love both of you guys just to give your parting comments. What else would you like to add into this conversation? Do you think that is important for a seasoned or a, a new consultant or someone considering this business to know? Because this is what, you know, when someone decides, this is what you're deciding about. Do you want to be part of this or not? If you don't, then you do something different and that's totally fine. We'd love you to be a customer. We'd love you to be a hostess and give us referrals. But if you don't want to represent Mary Kay, you don't have to. There's some other company out there you'll fit better into. But for the people that, you know, I knew when I heard about this, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to regret if I don't walk this out. I'm going to regret if I don't try it. Um, what do you want those women to know that you don't want them to miss out on? Um, because if she's our girl, we want her with us. Well, I'll just say, um, you know, and I know Alden shares this in common too, that I was a team sport athlete growing up. And so I loved sharing um, a common goal and a common mission with a group of other girls. And so I love that in Mary Kay, I kind of get to do that again, just in a very different arena. And so if any of you are watching and you ever played a team sport, um, you know, you wore the team uniform, you played by the rules of the game, you met the coach's expectation for that team because you all had this mission that was bigger than just you. And I love that because that also takes the pressure off of me or the focus off of me because it's really not about me and if we truly believe in Mary Kay's mission of enriching the lives of women that's what this is about it's not about Olivia getting what she wants and doing everything for herself and um I love that that I don't have to you know work up to that pressure and then I also want to encourage you um that when you know that it's not about you we have to raise the bar to leave room for lots of women to grow because if our bar is down here, that's not a lot of growth room for people. But if our bar is up here, there's a big opportunity for growth there, especially for somebody like me when I came out of college, kind of like what Dawn was saying. If somebody had presented Mary Kay to me as like a stay at home in your sweatpants, do this as a hobby, 
I would have never wanted to have a Mary Kay business or a Mary Kay career. But when somebody presented it to me as you can be one of these women who's really sharp, really classy, as Alden was saying, and you can have this career in Mary Kay and you can have this growth opportunity to grow into this woman, um, to be like these other women who you respect, that's what brought me into Mary Kay. And so um, I would say that to anybody who's watching, who's like, well, I'm an you know, I'm an independent contractor, I'm an entrepreneur, um, you know, I'll, I'm just going to do my own thing. Just know that as we've already touched on, you might be the only Mary Kay that somebody ever sees. And we just have to be willing to present the bigger picture. And if we're not, um, you know, I don't think it sounds fun to start my own cosmetic brand when I can represent a brand that's 60 years in, that's family owned, legacy based and debt free. I mean, that's why people start a Taco Bell franchise instead of a different Mexican food franchise, because why would you want to make it any harder on yourself <laughs> than it already is? Um, and so I think that's what I would part with saying is just, you know, it's not about you. And it's a lot easier when you choose to not make it about you. Yeah. Um, ditto everything that Olivia said. She actually took both of the things oh. that I was going to say. Um, cause for me, and I have it written down in my notes too. And like I said, from the beginning, the women that I saw in Mary Kay, they were representing the full big picture, Mary Kay, even if that's not where they were choosing to work on the career path. And I think that's something that has been of benefit to me from the beginning as a 19 year old, because I was willing to dress like the position that I wanted to be in. I was willing to work on how to present myself in a more business-like fashion because I was representing the full big picture Mary Kay, not where I was currently choosing to work my Mary Kay business. And I think that makes a very big difference. And also, like Olivia said, gives people room to grow. And I do believe that that's how we can be so multi-generational and have such benefit from young leaders, leading women, you know, that are two, three times their senior to having, you know, senior women that are, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80, and showing us what it looks like to be excellent at all ages and stages, no matter what level you choose to work Mary Kay business. I think it's really important that we're representing the full Mary Kay. And again, it's like Olivia and Dawn said, it's putting the focus totally off of us and onto other people, but making sure that when people do see us, they realize that we're representing one of the top five global beauty brands in the world. We're representing something way bigger than we could ever represent by ourselves, you know, in a million years. So I think that's something to really keep in mind and really take pride in and be vigilant about as we head into this next 60 years. Okay. Thank you, Alden. Thank you, Olivia. I will get you guys the copy and I hope everyone enjoyed our conversation on Mary Kay Image. I think a great challenge after you listen to this, um, process the information and share with your director. Okay. This is what this is what I'm going to do to feel you know better about how I'm representing this company in this opportunity to the world. Please share that with your director. That would be a great um, way to uh, make sure that this wasn't just entertainment for you. <laughs> this was training, and there's application. All right, you guys have a great day.